Good morning. I just decided to make a brief video this fine, fine Sunday morning, and it's entitled, What Does It Really Mean When the Bible Says That a Man Is the Head of the Household? I'd first like to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, where it clearly tells us, but I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a wife is her husband and the head of Christ is God. So for people who believe in that Trinity, that knocks that out right there, but that's another video. But anyway, you notice here that it says that the head of the wife is the husband. Now, when it's saying that, what it means, we first have to, have to understand that the Bible was originally written in Greek and Hebrew. So what something may mean in Hebrew, that's not necessarily what it means in English. So people have got to know how to translate that correctly. Let's just, let's just start off with that. Now, when the Bible says that the man is the head of a woman or the head of his wife, it means that if she is confused about something, she should go to her husband and ask him to help her resolve the problem. He is the source that she would go to when she's confused about something. But you have to understand that most of these men today, they're not qualified to be the head of the household because they don't respect their head, which the head of man is Christ. So if you don't have a husband who has the mind of Christ or who don't have moral, I mean, biblical morals and biblical values, then you have got to exercise the scripture saying, be wise, my child, because this is what make God's heart rejoice. And that scripture is found at, that scripture is found at Proverbs chapter 27, verse 11. Now in some of the translations, it says, be wise, my son, and bring joy to my heart. Then I can answer anyone who treats me with contempt. But when you read it from different translations, it says, be wise, my child. So that applies both to women and men. And it says, and make my heart rejoice. Then I will be able to answer my critics. Okay. Be wise, my child, and bring joy to my heart. So I may answer those who taunt me. That comes from another translation. But the point is, it's constantly telling us to be wise. So if you have a partner who do not make wise decisions, if you have a partner whose head is not Jesus Christ, then you are under obligation to follow God's law over your husband. Because if he's making decisions that's only going to benefit him, which is one of the reasons I have a problem with trying to follow a man's lead, because this day and age, you know, a lot of these husbands are selfish. They're not doing what's best for the family. They're not, not doing what's best for you and him. They're usually doing what's best for them. So you have to be very, very careful with how you um, understand these scriptures. And please keep in mind, uh, it's nice when you have an interlinear, uh, interlinium. An uh, interlinium, it, it, it translates, it shows you exactly what each word means in Greek and in Hebrew. It shows you exactly what it means. Just like the scripture where it says that wives are supposed to be submissive to their husbands. You know, submissive, when you translate it from Greek or Hebrew, it only means respect. It means to have the highest respect. It don't mean that he gets to boss you around. It don't mean that he has the final say. It means that you have to be very respectful because I think we are all smart enough to know that there are areas where 
some of us are more knowledgeable. So if you are more knowledgeable in a certain area than your husband, then of course you're going to have to take the lead on that because you have more knowledge on that situation or on that topic. But you do have to, if you're going to have to, you know, um, take the lead on something, you're supposed to do it very, very respectfully. And the reason why I focus on this a great deal is because you have a lot of dudes who just use women to make a come up. They expect for you, they want this woman to go to, oh, church woman. Okay. They want a church female because she's going to be following the scriptures. She knows that she's supposed to be submissive. She knows she got to do whatever I tell her to do. Uh, no, you have a lot of dudes out here who take advantage of that. And they'll sit up here and use this woman to make a come up so that they could get to where they want to be so they could get the real woman that they want to be with. They're just using you as a come up. That's why they're making very, very selfish decisions. Because let's think about it. Let's use a, 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 a an illustration. Let's say you're a hardworking woman. You work hard for your money. And your husband tell me, well, every time you get paid, I want you to give me your whole paycheck. Give me all your money. He could be sitting up here having a mistress on the side or two side pieces on the side. He's using your money to pay, take care of this broad. He's paying her telephone bill. He's taking care of her utility bill. Even if he's giving her, let's say, $100 a month, $200 a month, which is not a lot, but it's paying her cell phone bill. It's taking care of her utility bill. It's helping her out with her transportation. So in actuality, he's paying her bills. So you have to be very careful when you are a Christian woman or a God-fearing woman, a woman who is working hard to put on the strip of the old personality and putting on the mind and the personality of Jesus Christ. And also, let's not forget the scripture where it says, you see, this is the scripture that a lot of husbands, they don't never quote from this scripture, where it says we are to what? Submit. We are to submit to each other. Okay. So when your husband starts bringing this scripture of women are supposed to be submissive and we're supposed to do this and do that, when you can say respectfully, mind you, well, honey, don't the scriptures also say that we're supposed to submit to each other. And I recognize that the Bible says that you are the head of the house, but don't the Bible also say that the head of you is Christ? Are you following your head? Are you following your leadership, honey? Because when you're confused about something and you don't know the answers, you go to Jesus Christ, your head, for the answer. Can you help me understand that, honey, please? So yeah, that scripture to submit to each other is found at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, where it says that we are to submit to one another out of reverence or respect for Christ. That's what it says. So in closing, it is so, so, so important that when you're reading the Bible, not to take the scriptures out of context. I always say, first of all, read the whole chapter because you have a lot of people who they like to just throw out a verse, a chapter and a verse, uh, and then it, they take it to, to, they use that to try to prove their point or what have you. No, it is very important for you to read the whole chapter. Okay, that's all for now. This is Sheila True Love, always loving you, and I hope you have an amazing Sunday morning. I know I'm looking forward to my Christian meeting at 12 o'clock. I hope you attend your Christian meeting too. Have a great day, my darlings. Bye for now.